So very good day to everybody. This is Wireless Networks, and in today's class, we'll discuss about uh, antenna and wave propagation. So of course, this is especially for you, my dear students and young researchers. And you can reach me at the other Krishnan at the rate of Gmail dot com. So before beginning the session, once again, let me thank God for giving me this opportunity to deliver this useful session to share my knowledge among my fellow national, international participants, students, and young researchers. So in this class, we'll have a short introduction towards antennas. We'll have a history of antennas. So what are the various types of antennas? Then we'll discuss about lens antennas, the array antennas. Uh, what is the mechanism of the antenna radiation? So when transmission line is opened in a tapered fashion, so how it behaves as an antenna, we'll see that. So we'll also understand antenna as a transmission mode and receiving mode. Okay, so we'll understand the current and voltage distribution. We'll discuss about the common dipole antenna and of course the parameters of the antenna. Okay, so at regular intervals, I'll be giving you some short videos to discuss the knowledge and other topics. And for your kind reminder, I'm telling you, I've already given the animal work in the hemis. Please complete them as soon as possible. Okay, so antennas, you know, it's an electronic eyes and of course the ears in the world. So that they are the links with the space. So it's a very important, essential, integrated part of our civilization. So antenna or maybe aerial, long, uh, earlier days they used to call it as aerial. Okay, so it's a electrical device that is going to convert electrical power into radio waves and of course vice versa. So it is used with the radio transmitter or maybe radio receiver. So maybe if you take in the case of the transmission, a radio transmitter supplies an oscillating radio frequency, okay, electrical current to the antenna's terminals and of course antenna is going to radiate the energy from the current as EM waves, electromagnetic waves or maybe radio waves. Okay. And of course in the reception the antenna is going to intercept some of the power of the electromagnetic wave in order to provide very small tiny voltage at its terminals that is actually applied to the receiver that you are going to amplify. Okay. So antennas of course it's a very important part of all equipment that is going to use radio. Okay, so they are used in systems, maybe like uh, radio broadcasting, broadcast TV, two-way radio, communication receivers, radar, cell phones, and of course, satellite communication. And of course, we can use it even uh, when you're having a big uh, you know, vehicle. Okay, so for the garage door openers as well, uh, wireless microphones, Bluetooth enabled devices, wireless computer networks, like baby monitors, RFID tags so there they are the applications where uh, you know you, you use antennas so antenna will be having an arrangement of the metallic conductor called as an element and of course which is electrically connected okay often through the transmission line to the receiver or maybe transmitter so antennas you're going to act as uh, transformers between the conducted waves and of course electromagnetic waves propagating freely in space okay so that thing that antenna is actually uh, derived from biological term okay so we have like antennae okay so that is you're going to describe the long thin feelers okay possessed by many of the insects okay for example uh, you have dragonfly okay the big thing okay so that's antennae okay from there only antenna okay so in wireless communication systems even signals are radiated in space as uh, electromagnetic wave using transmitting antenna or maybe receiving antenna and of course the fraction of the radiated power is intercepted by using the receiving antenna so you can say an antenna is a device okay for radiating or maybe receiving the radio waves so antenna can be thought of as a transitional uh, st structure okay between the free space and of course the guiding device such as the transmission line or maybe waveguide so antennas are nothing but metallic structures but of course dielectric antenna that is how you use it okay so it's a rigid metallic structure okay called as the antenna where the wire form you can call it as a aerial okay so we'll have like uh, uh, different types of uh, antenna wire antenna so we'll have dipole monopole loop antenna and of course helix antenna okay so you can use it in personal com uh, communication personal applications automobile buildings ships aircrafts and of course spacecrafts even okay for example here you see tv okay antenna okay we'll have the transmission line we have the antenna and we have the 
you know the current distribution okay going on and on okay then we have horn antennas okay so like a wave guide opening so maybe in the aircrafts uh, spacecrafts okay so the antennas can be you know flush okay then we have a reflector antenna it's a parabolic uh, reflector corner reflector so they are nothing but high gain antennas that you can use it in the radio astronomy microwave communication of course satellite tracking even okay so we'll have lens antenna also we'll have convex plane uh, convex to convex convex to concave or concave plane lenses okay so they can be used for very high frequency applications then we have micro strip antenna it's a rectangular or maybe circular shaped uh, metallic patch above the ground plane so maybe for aircrafts spacecrafts satellites okay missiles cars mobile phones will be using micro strip antenna so okay so we have like different types of uh, you know micro strip antennas okay then we'll have yagi wood antenna micro strip patch array aperture array slotted waveguide array so you can use it for high gain applications of course with controllable radiation pattern okay so here the radiation mechanism is all about when the electrical charges is going to have acceleration or maybe deceleration the electromagnetic radiation will be produced so here it is nothing but the movement of charges that is actually current okay that's how the radiation comes into effect okay so not all current distributions will produce a strong enough radiation for communication so antennas is going to radiate or maybe couple or we concentrate or maybe direct the electromagnetic energy in the you know desired focus direction okay so antenna you can call it as isotropic or maybe non directional and anisotropic or maybe direction so there is no rule no proper rule for selecting the antenna for any particular frequency range or maybe any particular application so while choosing an antenna many electrical characteristics mechanical characteristics of course structural characteristics should be taken into account so we'll have like radiation pattern gain efficiency impedance frequency characteristics shape size weight and of course the look at the antenna and that is how you're going to make the economic viability so cost size and shape makes the major difference on the usage of the different frequencies so high gain of course directivity are the very important requirements for the transmitting antennas so whereas low side lobes and of course larger snr larger signal to noise ratio are the key selection criteria for the receiving antennas so antenna it can vary in size maybe like few millimeters if you take in the case of strip antenna or maybe thousands of feet like dish antenna for the astronomical observations okay so here you have a okay equal to mu i dl by 4 by r okay so we'll have okay di okay dl by dt is equal to dl q the charge dv by dt okay so this dl q this dv by dt you can take it as the acceleration k okay so e the electric field is nothing but the negative of the potential gradient minus del v okay minus del a by uh, do a by do t okay which is nothing but minus del v minus this do a by do t is given by mu dl by 4 pi r di by dt okay so that can be given as minus del v minus the factor okay mu i mu dl by 4 pi r okay q a so this factor can be substituted here so, okay so this is the value for the electric field so as you can see in order to create the radiation in order to create the electric field there must be a time varying current di by dt or maybe an acceleration or maybe deceleration of a charge q so if the charge maybe it's not moving a current is not created and of course there will be no radiation so maybe if the charge is moving with a uniform velocity there is no radiation if the wire is straight and of course infinite in extent there is radiation if the wire is curved bent discontin uh, discontinuous terminated or maybe truncated so in this case if the charge is oscillating maybe in the time motion it is going to radiate even if the wire is actually straight so this you can call it as the current distribution on the antenna that is going to actually produce the radiation so here the current distributions are actually excited by the transmission lines and of course the wave guides okay so if you take in the case of the time varying conditions maxwell's equation as i told you 1 2 3 4 that is going to predict the radiation of the electromagnetic uh, energy from the current source or maybe the accelerated charge 
So it can happen for all of the frequencies, but it is considered as insignificant as long as the size of the source or region is not comparable to the wavelength. So while transmission lines are actually designed to minimize this radiation loss, so radiation into the free space is the very most important purpose of the antenna. Okay. So maybe for the steady state harmonic variations, usually we'll be focusing on the time changing current. Okay. So here we will be having no radiation. Here we'll be having radiation propagating in the opposite direction. Here also we'll have radiation. Here we'll have you know radiation as well propagating in different directions so the radiated power can be calculated for the transients or pulses okay with the case of accelerated charge so here the radiation is perpendicular to the acceleration and radiated power is proportional to the square of the i l or b q v so this i is nothing but the time changing current uh, current unit you, you know okay amperes okay per second okay uh, Le L is nothing but the length of the current element, okay, normally in meters, okay. Q is nothing but the charge, the unit is coulomb, okay. And V is nothing but the time changing velocity, okay. So, as transmitting antenna, here the transmission line is actually connected to the source or maybe generator at one end, okay. Along the uniform part of the line energy, it's guided as the plane transverse electromagnetic wave with, of course, little loss. So spacing between the line is of course a very smaller fraction of lambda as the line is opened out and of course separation between the two lines becomes you know uh, comparable to lambda you can call it as antenna and of course we'll have free space wave since the currents on the transmission line you know flow on the antenna but of course feels associated with them you know keep on going. So from you know circuit point of view the antenna will be having a resistance RR what you call to be the radiation resistance okay. So as a receiving antenna, we'll see that. So active radiation by other antenna or maybe passive radiation from you know distant objects is going to raise the apparent temperature of radiation resistance. So it has nothing to do with the physical temperature of the antenna itself, but of course it is related to the temperature of the distant object that you know the antenna is looking at. So radiation resistance is also called as a virtual resistance that does not exist physically, but of course it's a quantity coupling the antenna to the distance region of the space through the virtual transmission line okay so we'll have you know antenna as a transmission mode okay so here you know transmission line we'll have the generator guided electromagnetic wave we'll have the transmission i mean the transition region okay so here we'll see you know electromagnetic uh, sorry electric field line of the radiated wave okay and here the wave is actually launched into the free space okay then we have the reception mode from here to here okay so we'll have the incident wave okay so we'll it's entering propagating into the transition region okay guided electromagnetic wave appears over here okay to the receiver okay we'll have the detector or the receiver so this is the reception or maybe receiving mode so we'll have the concept of reciprocity okay so the antenna is going to exhibit the identical impedance during transmission or maybe reception okay so same directional uh, patterns okay uh, during the transmission or the reception same effective height while transmitting or receiving can take place so transmission and reception antennas can be used interchangeably so medium it can be linear passive and of course isotropic so here the physical properties are the same in different directions so antennas you can usually optimize it for reception or transmission but not for both of them okay so we'll have the current and voltage distribution so here the current flowing in the wire of a length related to the radio frequency is going to produce a electromagnetic field so this field is going to radiate from the wire and of course it is set free in space so the principle of the radiation of electromagnetic energy will have two laws okay one the moving electric field will be creating a magnetic field and a moving magnetic field will be creating an electric field so in space these two fields will be in phase but of course perpendicular to each other at any given moment so although maybe you consider the conductor to be present when a moving electric field or of course magnetic field is mentioned so the laws do not say anything about the conductor so these laws are going to hold true whether the conductor is actually present or not so the current and voltage distribution on a half wave hertz antenna you will see okay in view a the piece of the wire is actually cut in half and of course attached to the terminals of the high frequency alternating current generator.
So the frequency of the generator is set so that half of the wire is considered as a one quarter wavelength of the output. Okay. So here the wavelength you can call it as lambda and this is the common dipole antenna. So we will see the common dipole antenna current distribution curve. The direction of the current flow it takes place in this direction plus to minus. Okay. And we will have the charge distribution positive negative. Okay. So you will have lambda by 4 lambda by 4. Okay. So this is the half wave dipole antenna. So we'll have the parameters. So current flows in the antenna with an amplitude that varies with the generator voltage. So we'll have the sinusoidal wave distribution of the cha charge that is going to exist on the antenna. So this charge can reverse the polarity for every half cycle. Okay. So the sine wave variation in the charge magnitude is going to lag the sine wave variation in the current by, you know, one quarter uh, cycle. Okay. So we'll have the, uh, you know, the space quantities. Okay. So, uh, field patterns uh, will have polarization type of polarization par patterns okay beam area okay then you have directivity gain effective aperture ra radar cross section physical quantities size weight antenna that's the transition region okay circuit quantities will have antenna impedance uh, za impedance radiation resistance rr antenna temperature T A. Okay. So these are the antenna parameters. So maybe at a given moment, given point of time, the generator's right side is positive and left side is actually negative. So law of physics states that, you know, unlike poles attract and like poles ripple each other. So consequently, the electrons will flow away from the negative terminal as far as possible while the positive terminal will be attracting the electrons. So here the distribution curve will show that most current flows in the center and none flows at the ends. Okay. So the current distribution over the antenna is the same regardless of how much or maybe how little the current is actually flowing. So however, current at any given point on the antenna will vary directly with the amount of voltage that the generator is going to develop. Okay. So one quarter cycle after the electrons begin to flow, the generator will be actually developing it. So the minimum voltage and of course current decreases to zero. So although no current is actually flowing, so a minimum number of electrons are at the left end of the line with the uh, you know, minimum character, uh, minimum number at the right end. Okay. So the charge uh, distribution along the wire will be varying as the voltage of the generator is going to vary. Okay. So this is the inimitant work for you. Types of digital modulation used in the wireless communication systems and as for wireless networks and features. So it's a very interesting topic. Go through them. Please complete the work in the Hemis and I will be checking them as soon as possible.